This is building a cat window, part two. We're focusing on the hinge in this video. We built the frame in the first video, and now we're going to add the moving parts. So what would be the characteristics of a good pet door? Obviously, it needs to swing in both directions. It should stay closed when it isn't in use. It should have some resistance to pressure so it'll stay shut when the wind blows. And we don't want it to put a kink in a cattail that didn't get out of the way in time. In fact, it was this need to protect a cattail that led me to this design for the hinge. What appealed to me about it was that if it meets resistance in one direction, it's still free to move in a different direction. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to hold the middle part of the hinge still. The rope gets trapped and the more I pull, the more it gets pinched. If I give the middle part of the hinge freedom to move, then rather than pin the rope down, it'll allow it to slip on through. The hinge is made of a top, a middle, and a bottom, all cut from three quarter inch white pine. All three pieces are one and a half inches wide. The top and bottom are a tad less than nine inches long, and the middle is approximately six inches long. Two quarter inch dowels run the length of the hinge. One runs through the top in the middle, and one runs through the bottom in the middle. So we need to cut grooves that the dowels will fit in. The grooves will be 5 16 of an inch wide and just a hair over one half inch deep. We'll need to cut away waste on the top and bottom to make room for the middle. Make sure your hinge fits in the frame with room to swing. We need thin strips of wood to fit in the grooves and close them up after the dowels are in. These are going to wind up being a quarter inch by five sixteenths of an inch, but they can be rough cut to start and sanded down until they fit. You don't see me cutting them in the video, but you'll need to when you build your cat window. You saved those little scraps of wood from your last project because you knew you'd find a use for them someday, and that day has arrived. Once you're sure everything fits and works like it should, it's time to glue it up. The dowels don't get glued. They have to move freely. Just use glue sparingly on the wood strips that seal the grooves. You can use the dowels to space them properly, but take the dowels out again to let the glue dry. Once the glue has dried, it's time to sand the strips down until they're flush with the rest of the pieces. Now we've got to round the edges of the parts so that they're able to swing without hitting each other. I used a 3 8 inch radius roundover router bit for this, but you could do it any number of ways, including sanding or using a block plane or even a pocket knife. Paint it, glue it, test it, screw it. For a quick tutorial on how to cut plexiglass, see the first video, Building a Cat Window, Part 1. Okay, I haven't talked about the magnet yet. I put a magnet in the frame in the first video, and the idea is for there to be some metal strips on the window, and it's going to hold it in place when there's a little bit of wind blowing. So the uh, metal strips turned out to be a couple of nails that I had. It actually works okay.
Y'all come back now, you hear?